can be a big change. And we see that transition um, with anybody coming into nursing, whether they're coming into it straight out of you know, high school to college to, to a career, or it's a second career, uh, is, you know, it takes time. Ahead on Pathways, transitioning from the classroom to a nursing role. Welcome to the very first episode of Pathways, part of our new Healthy, Happy, and Wise podcast series at Northern Light Health. I'm your host, Emily Tadlock. On this podcast, we're meeting a variety of professionals exactly where they're at, exploring their pathway into healthcare. This first season is focused on nursing, so what better way to start than at the very beginning? I'm joined by nurse Jillian Corcoran and director of nursing practice and clinical education, Sarah Varney. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining me today. Yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so let's hop right in. We're talking on this podcast to several different nurses who are in several different places in their careers, but it's got to start somewhere. So, uh, Jillian, let's start with you. How did you decide you wanted to become a nurse? Yeah, so this is actually my second career. Um, I was a mechanical engineer for eight years, seven, eight years. And I just wanted to feel like I went to work every day and did something that helped and made me feel good. So I took some prereqs while I was working and then I went to nursing school. Wow. It's a little bit different than what you hear, you know, your yeah. traditional person coming directly out of high school, going mm -hmm. in and figuring out, oh, I want to be a nurse. You didn't know right away. No, I went to college undeclared. I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I was between engineering and nursing, which is weird. I was like, oh, I'm good at math, but like, I like people and I want to help. So I picked one and I gave it a whirl. <laughs> Give it a whirl. Was it exactly what you wanted? And so then when you went for the other one, yeah, pretty much, I like it. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> Sarah, tell me it, Jillian's story. Isn't necessarily what you hear most of the time, right? Not most of the time, but certainly some of the time, I think we do see a fair number of new grads, especially from some of those accelerated nursing programs, um, coming through that have tried something else already and have found their passion lies elsewhere. I love that. Yeah. Jillian, tell me a little bit about what nursing school was like. Um, we, <laughs> I see you smiling. Um, school is not easy. It's not easy, no. um, especially for someone who's going back a second time um, yeah. to have to do all of it all over again. Yeah. So, I mean, my first degree was wicked hard and this one wasn't easier. Um, and I did do an accelerated program. So it was 16 months uh, nonstop. I had like a week off for Christmas probably, but that was it. Um, but that's what I wanted. I'm that type of person that if I'm going to do something, I'm just going to go do it and I'm going to get it done with so I can meet my goals. Okay. Um, so for, I'm a, I don't know, I'm good at school, so it wasn't too bad for me, but it's definitely overwhelming and it was a lot to undertake, especially having been out of college for a few years in between. Um, so Sarah, when you guys are meeting new graduate nurses, you're typically meeting them in the classroom before, before they get anywhere. Right. Yeah. So, and I'm really lucky in that I am the hiring manager for our new graduate nurse program. So I have the opportunity to actually meet all of them before they start here. Um, I have a sense of kind of what the kind of background they're coming from, what they've completed already, um, which program they went through. But yeah, we spend a solid three weeks with the new grads as the education department, myself, and then a couple of educators that work with me as well. And uh, we really, again, get to learn their learning style and um, try to tailor what we're delivering for a program to their needs. Okay. So you mentioned a program. Um, these new graduates, they go through school, they graduate, um, pre or post NCLEX, they come to you? Pre or post, yep. Okay. And then what happens? Here at Mercy, they start on a common start date. So they'll all come in together, um, go through some class time, some general clinical onboarding that we would have for any new hire that first week. And then uh, they slowly ease into patient care. So it's almost like being in clinical again, which is really nice for that new grad um, who might be a little bit hesitant being a nurse on their own or just about to be a nurse if they haven't tested yet. Um, and we're right there at their, at their elbow. We're supporting them as educators, uh, being that resource to answer any questions as they're taking care of their very, you know, first patient assignment. Okay. So Jillian, 
your first day, you know, well, let's say you're, you're after your first week of just, you know, regular onboarding, getting to know Northern Light Health, getting to know the hospital. And what was it like transitioning from that classroom? Now, I know you did clinicals, but mm -hmm. transitioning from that into your first nursing job, what was that like? It's weird. Like, I don't know. It is they do ease you in like clinicals, like Sarah said, because you go and you're on the floor with one of the educators for what the first two weeks you're on the floors. Um, and so you always have an easy person to go to, but you also should learn to talk to the people around you, like the nurses you're working with. Mm -hmm. Um, but everyone here was really supportive. Like, I mean, that's why I picked this floor specifically that I work on because I really like the teamwork here and everyone is so welcoming and you can just go to them and ask questions. Pause. We didn't say what floor are you on? Oh, I work on telemetry. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, wait. And what's telemetry for people like me who have no idea? Um, cardiac monitoring, essentially. Anyone with heart problems comes to our floor. Okay. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Now resume. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? <laughs> the transition, it's, it's weird, but it's gradual. Um, and you get to do it at your own pace. Like when you start to do the rotations on all of the floors, you start off with however many patients you feel comfortable with, and then you build up from there. So no one, you don't come in and they dump four patients on you. They start you off if, with one or two, see how you feel, learn how to do all the charting, learn how to do your assessments in your own way, and then build from there. Okay. Yeah. So it's progressive. That's, well, that's really <laughs> nice to hear um, because I think, uh, you know, as a, a nurse who's never worked in a hospital, you know, you're coming out of school mm -hmm. um, and you're like, what, what is this going to be like? Am I all, all of a sudden going to have to just handle it or am I going to have the support that I need to, to help me? Oh yeah. Manage? I was worried for that for sure because I had never worked in a hospital. I wasn't a CNA before. And I had never been in Mercy before. All of my clinicals were at a different hospital. So I had never used our charting system. The pumps here were new to me. Um, everything was new. So all of it, I was a little overwhelmed, but yeah. But eventually made to feel super comfortable. Oh yeah, absolutely. We love to hear that. Yeah. That is so, I mean, <laughs> hello, new graduate nurses who may be listening to our podcast. We like to make you feel comfortable. Um, is that right, Sarah? That's the goal. Yeah. It's all about that transition to nursing practice, um, coming from school and being, you know, I, I often hear people say, uh, they have this moment of realization that all of a sudden now they've always been saying, Oh, I'll get the nurse. And now instead they are the nurse. And so it's a big shift and that can be a lot for people to handle. When you, when they first come in, there's a new graduate nursing program. How long is it? Um, sure. it's, can it be extended if someone is like, wow, I'm, I'm really still not sure. Um, what, what does that look like for someone? Yeah. And, it, and kind of like you alluded to there, it can certainly change by person. Um, the way we structure our new graduate nurse residency is the very, the, the part of the program that Jillian was referring to that initial 12 week orientation. Um, that is what I oversee and, after those three weeks that we were talking about earlier, where we're getting um, used to taking that patient assignment and the educators are with the new grads, then they're paired up with preceptors on each of the med surge units uh, here at the hospital. Uh, during that time, you know, it's really based, basically taking those those uh, patients as they're advancing through the weeks um, and becoming more comfortable with the full patient assignment. That's always the goal at the end, um, but not everybody gets there in 12 weeks. Sometimes it is longer. And uh, around week eight or nine, we start to, for our new grads, look at where they're most interested in working. So as I mentioned, you know, in the beginning, they're really orienting to all of the units. Okay. Um, and then as they're going through the program, they're getting to see specialty areas. Um, they're seeing all three of those med surge units that we have here. And then they're applying to the positions that are available on those units at that week eight or nine. And so as we start to look at that next transition from that orientation to med surge, it's planning what that's going to look like at the end of 12 weeks as well. So that could be additional orientation, and most of the time is, uh, but it could be to one of the med surge units for maybe two weeks, three weeks, or it could be they're moving into a specialty unit and might have even more. So it really depends on where they end up getting hired to after the initial orientation, but also where they're at with their own learning. Oh, that's fantastic. So so Jillian, you went through this. Mm -hmm. um, you got your feet wet in a lot of different places. Oh yeah. How did you make a decision on where you wanted to end up? Well, it's, it's awesome because you do get to see all the units. 
So you get to work on the med surge floor, on the telly, you get to go on the surgical floor. And then I spent days all around like the hospital okay? because you learn where everything is, which sounds a little silly, but it's really helpful because I wouldn't know where IR is well, if I hadn't been there for a day or two. Mm -hmm. um, you get to see all the different places and kind of see what you like, how you like how their days are structured versus what you want, where you could see yourself maybe in like five years, but not yet. Okay. Um, and then, I mean, figure out what you like and then see what positions are open and then go for it. It's basically what I did. <laughs> <laughs> and then knowing that you can always change it if you don't like it. I think that's always just nice to know because I wanted to be in the ER. Like that was okay. like what I wanted to do. And when I was applying, I don't, maybe they had one position open and then it went away or something. And so I picked Telly after that because I think the acuity of patients here is more interesting to me personally than okay. the other floors. Um, and it's really good basis to grow my baby amount of nursing knowledge <laughs> Okay, um, and go from there. So I went for this place. Okay. Yeah. And, and you love it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't eventually go back to ED if you decided you wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Yeah. And, and that's, and Jillian just said it, you know, you're not, you're not stuck. You know, you can always look to grow in advance mm -hmm. and that's the beauty of nursing. And I think that's why a lot of people go into nursing because there's just so many opportunities. So even for those of us who might, you know, end up where we think we want to be, we might be there a period of time and then decide, oh, there's something else I'm really interested in too, or I just need to change and I want to be challenged in a different way. Um, so having that opportunity to see those different areas during that initial orientation, it really helps people start to develop what that path could look like for them. Um, and we've seen that we've seen new grads come in and they think they want to go one location and they get there and they spend a day there and all of a sudden they realize that's not for them, uh, or they fall in love with something else entirely. Yeah. I remember one person in my group, my cohort, she wasn't really sure what she wanted to do. And then she did one day in the OR and she goes, Oh my God, this isn't for me. Like <laughs> absolutely. And so she's been there since and she loves it. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It's really cool to, to see that click, right? Yes. And especially for you, Sarah, I mean, you've watched so many new graduates come in to be able to see them like truly thrive and love where they're at and love where they're working and loving what they're doing. There is a place for everybody. I always say Yeah, <laughs> that is yeah. awesome, including your place. Yeah. So, you know, you're an RN as well, yeah. Sarah. So tell me, how did you end up working with new graduate nurses? Yeah. And that's, it's funny that to think about at this point, because it's not something I ever expected to be doing. Um, not that I gave it a lot of thought. I am just much more of a organic kind of take things as they come type of person. Um, unlike Jillian, I was direct into nursing. Uh, when I graduated high school, I really loved the elderly population. I had really close relationships with my grandparents and thought like, what better job than to hang out with <laughs> elderly folks all day. Uh, and so I did that. Uh, I went to nursing school and I, the cardiac unit, telemetry unit, when I started, you know, especially back then, uh, was certainly a lot of elderly patient population. Mm -hmm. Um, an old heart is sometimes a sick heart and that's just how it goes. So, uh, I spent 11 years on the telemetry unit. I started at mercy as a new grad myself. Oh, wow. Uh, and then over time, um, the way it actually ended up happening was when I was the nurse manager for the telemetry unit. So I started as a new grad, did rotating nights, days. Uh, I worked as clinical lead for a period of time and then eventually interim manager, which led to being manager. And uh, during that time, I was asked to oversee our new graduate program as the hiring manager. So we had an educator who was providing the education and the support uh, like I am overseeing now. Okay. Um, but at that time, I was really just the, the manager kind of point person. And that was how it started. And I loved working with those new grads and overseeing that process. And a lot of being a manager is educating your team as mm -hmm. well. And the opportunity came up to work in the education department and I had found a new, a new passion. And so I took it and uh, was really lucky to have the support to, to make that transition. 
Um, telemetry will always be my home. <laughs> so I'm a little partial, uh, yeah, but it is a great place to learn. And, and I really had the opportunity of working with a lot of individuals that were very driven in their career path, um, starting out as new nurses or even CNAs who then became nurses right. and then, uh, nurse practitioners or nurse leaders, um, all different paths. So that was, uh, something that I really enjoyed on that floor. Um, so that, that's pretty much how it led to, to me being here now. Yeah. So you went from want, wanting to work with our elderly to working with some of the younger Go population. Figure. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. What a shift in your passion. Spectrum. I love it. <laughs> I love it though. And it's neat that nursing offered you the opportunity to, to shift that passion yeah. in different ways. That's pretty neat. Absolutely. I always say if I had known I was going to love working with new graduate nurses so much, I probably would have taught clinicals a long time before I changed right. to the education department. But you know, hindsight, <laughs> hindsight. And now here you are yep. and you must be so proud. Of yeah. Julian. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'm sure I can just uh, listeners. You can't see Sarah, but she just looks like the type that would be the proud mom of like all of her new grad nurses. <laughs> probably comes from her being a mom. <laughs> <laughs> probably. I would say so. Um, so, you know, we, we're going to have a variety of people listening to this podcast, whether they be your fellow nurses or, um, fellow new graduate nurses. What would you say to, um, nurses who are, or students even about getting into the nursing field? I think it's important to be patient with yourself. Um, you know, we, it, it's a, it can be a big change and we see that transition, um, with anybody coming into nursing, whether they're coming into it straight out of, you know, high school to college to, to a career, or it's a second career, uh, is, you know, it takes time. It definitely takes time to feel comfortable. Um, I really encourage new nurses to consider a nurse residency program because it does provide a lot of that support. It can make that transition easier. Uh, it's not for everybody. You know, some people will know where they want to be and want to jump right into that unit and, and work in that area. Uh, but certainly, you know, if there's any hesitation around making that transition to being a registered nurse, I think it's a really good way to successfully navigate that. Yeah, I would echo the be patient with yourself because I'm the type of person who, if I'm going to do something, I like to be good at it. Right. Like it's just who I am. And I know that after the 12 weeks were over, like I felt good about, I had two more weeks, I think of orientation and I felt good about doing things, but at the end of the shift, you know, you still feel like, you know, nothing like you got through the day and you know, you did your stuff, but you still feel like I learned so much and why don't I know like a little bit more already? I should have more of this and it's frustrating, but you have to realize this is all brand new. Even nurses who have been nurses for five, 10 years are still learning things every day. And like, it's gonna get better. Cause I think, I don't know when it happened, but somewhat recently I've like something hit and I was like, Oh, you know, when I leave, I feel good that like, I actually did complete all my charting and I know it. Like I just felt more confident. Yeah. And so just, you'll get there. Just be patient. It's coming. <laughs> everyone feels like this. <laughs> it is normal. Like everyone feels like it. Everyone feels like this. Maybe yeah. that should be the uh, title <laughs> of the <you> episode. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And then I just want to add that when yeah. we were talking about, um, how you're not stuck on the floor or stuck in like one role of your nursing career at mercy specifically, I feel like I have seen so many nurses who have moved all around this hospital. Like you'll see, like Sarah has done it. You'll find someone who is in IR that used to work on telly, but also like work somewhere else per diem. And people float all around this hospital and people here encourage it. Like they're happy to grow their nurses in any form that that is. Like if we can still help you here and we're still growing you here, like we're happy to. Whatever makes so, you happy, we yeah. want to help with that. Yeah. I love that. And a lot of our hospitals in the Northern Lake Health System, they all offer new graduate programs, mm -hmm. which is really great to know um, that anywhere you work in the Northern Lake Health System, um, you're going to have that support that you need to, to transition from the classroom into the hospital. Yeah. That's great. Awesome. Well, thank you, ladies. I really appreciate you being here today. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thanks to our listeners for tuning in to Pathways. Be sure to join us again in two weeks as we explore medical surgical nursing. 
Thank you for listening to this episode of Pathways. Please join us next time for a new episode. There are several ways you can tune in. On our website at northernlighthealth.org slash healthy happy wise. We are also on Apple, YouTube, and Spotify, which makes it easy for you to listen on the go on your favorite app.